Hi, everyone. Today's topic is introduction to angiosperms, that is flowering plants. Angiosperms are plants. Plants are living organisms. They are special in the sense that they make their own food to process all photosynthesis. Plants are very important for life. They provide oxygen for animals and they take in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. Crops are domesticated plants. Crops are plants that are useful to man. Man takes them from the wild and cultivates them for his own use. All crops are plants, but not all plants are crops. There are many plants that are added as, as wheat. They are not cultivated, but cultivated ones are called crops. These crops form our food, uh, give us fiber for our clothes, give us raw materials for industry. All crops are higher plants, and most of them are angiosperms. Angiosperms, also called flowering plants, are plants that produce flowers and bear seeds enclosed in the fruit. They have flowers, they have their fruit with seeds. They live everywhere around us. They, dom they dominate plants in the world. And they, they occupy about 88% of plant freedom. They are very successful plants on it. Evolution of algae plants. Angiosperm evolved about 140 million years ago. They have flowers and they have many pollinators, like animal, insect, wind. These this pollinators that they have made them to be cross pollinated, which give them room to be variable, that is, to have different types. We made them to withstand natural selection. Their fruits and seeds are well adapted for dispersal, which made them to spread throughout the world. Some of those fruits and seeds have wind, wind, which made them to be easily blown by the wind. Some have spine, which made them to, to be attached to animal body and help them in dispersal to other places. They also undergo double fertilization. This double fertilization leads to production of embryo and endosperm. And endosperm serve as food reserve for the embryo when they're mating. The body of a typical crop is divided into two systems those above ground and those below ground. Those above ground, they are called shoot system. Why below ground they are called root system? The above ground consists of flower, fruit, stem, leaf, node, internode, bud. Internode is, is the distance between two nodes. The bud, there are two types of bud: the terminal bud and the axillary bud. The terminal bud terminates the plant, while the axillary bud occur at the acid. Acid is the angle between stem and leaf, the, the root system. The root, the root system has two types, primary root and secondary root. The primary root is the root that develops from the radical. Why the secondary root? They are the root that emanated from the primary root. Angiosperm are divided into two groups of plants. Monocots and dicots. As the dead god grow into embryo, the first leaves of the young sporophyte de develop are uh, called cotyledons. They are also called still leaves. Some group of plants, they only have one cotyledon. This group of plants are called monocots. Examples are maize, sorghum, rice, wheat. In fact, in fact, all series are monocots. The dicots 
This one, they have two utilidad. Cowpea, melon, upumba, granite, soybean. They are all examples of dye utilidad. Now, let us compare monocot and dicot. Based on number of utilidad, monocot has one, dicot has two. Based on leaf venation pattern, monocot is parallel, while dicot has net venation pattern. Based on root, monocot has fibrous root, while dicot has tap root. Based on flower parts, monocot flower occur in groups of theory. Why that of Dacot occur in groups of four or five? Based on vascular body position, monocot vascular body position as scattered. Why that of Dacot they are arranged in a circle? Based on stem type, monocot have a stem. Why Dacot has a or woody stem? This table summarizes the, dif the differences between dicot and monocot plants. And the summary of what we have said so far is here. So the, our next topic will be to look at the plant parts. So next class, the next topic we'll be looking at the stem and the root.